Hi everybody, this is Elder Bill with Christ the Ark of Salvation Ministries and I wanna thank you for joining us at the Ark today. Hey look, I have something that I'm sure is going to add value to your life. Check it out. I was reading and the Gospel of John in the ninth chapter. Now you're familiar with this. This is when Jesus sees the man that was born blind. And the disciples see him and they go, uh, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents? Now, I don't know how a man who was born blind could sin, but Jesus addressed the question anyway. He said, neither did this man sin nor his parents, but that the works of God might be shown through him. And this brought a question to mind. How many times has a situation been placed before us and we spend more time trying to figure out how the person got into the situation or than uh, uh, working the situation. All right, let me give you an example. How many times have you seen that guy at the light? You know, the one that's always got the sign asking for money or that homeless person that you run across uh, on a regular basis or that guy that stands in front of 7-Eleven asking for money or uh, 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 even that guy who stands outside of Starbucks uh, and he could be a young guy. Uh, uh, I've seen him many times uh, that stands outside of Starbucks and and they're asking for something. How many times have we missed our opportunity for the works of God to be shown through them while we try to figure out what put them in this situation? We, we have to understand, everybody has a clock and our clocks are ticking. Jesus put it this way as he continued to address this man's situation. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it's day, because night is coming and no one can work. What I loved about this was the way the uh, English Standard Version says it. It says, we must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, for night comes when no man can work. In other words, everybody has a set amount of time to accomplish the works that the Father sent them to accomplish. Then Jesus continues with the disciples, and this is something that he says, which blows my mind. He said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now there's so many di directions we can travel with that statement, man totally born in darkness, and Jesus now the light, and they come together, but we're not gonna go into that. This is the part that got me. He said, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. But Jesus was crucified. He died. He was resurrected and he ascended to the right hand of the Father. But he said, as long as I'm in the world, then the bell went off. Wait, doesn't Jesus reside in the heart of every believer? So he is still in the world and he resides in us. And if he resides in us, that means we are now the light of the world. And our obligation is to bring every man, woman, boy and girl out of darkness into the light. He supports this in the 14th chapter of John, where he says, whosoever believes in me, the works that I do, shall he also do. And greater works than these shall he do, for I go to the Father. So there is an expectation that we will go beyond where Jesus went when he was in the world and do greater works. We really need to take a moment and consider this. We really need to take some time and consider our walk. Contemplate over Christ's expectation for our life and our ministries. He expects us to do greater, greater. We need to think about that thing. People, we have to understand our clock is ticking. And when our clock runs out, the question is, will we have done everything that was set to our hands to do? Even Jesus had a clock. His clock was a three year clock. What does your clock look like? It's time for us 
to get to work. We have to ask ourselves, have we allowed our lives to overtake God's work? This message is about self-examination. Have we done everything we could do with the time that was assigned to us? The scriptures say it this way, no one lights a candle to put it under a bushel. When you light the candle, you put it on a lampstand so that it will shine and give light. If the scriptures go further, it says a city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Are we covering our light? Light is supposed to illuminate darkness. It's supposed to eradicate all darkness. The scriptures say, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven, that men might see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. I must work the works of him that sent me. So men might see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. So let's go back and examine the scripture. Why was the man blind? So that the works of God might be shown through him. Why was that homeless man put in your path? So that the works of God might be shown through him. Why was the naked person put in your path? So the works of God might be shown through them. Why was that hungry person put in your path? So that the works of God might be shown through them. Why was any of this put in your path? So that the works of God might be shown through you. Through us. Look, what makes this message important is we're coming up on the holiday season, Thanksgiving and Christmas. These are generally family holidays, but there are so many people in the world that are suffering and they won't find the joy of the holiday like others would because of their situation. Some will be homeless, some will be hungry, some will not have coats to cover themselves in the winter, some will be cold. They will be placed in our path. When it happens, I want you to think back on this word and let the works of God be shown through you. Now, here's the catch. The works of God can't be shown through you if there's nothing in you. If you have not accepted Christ as your personal savior, you don't have the light for men to see. But we can rectify that right now. We can light your candle and set you on a candlestick right now. And all you have to do for that to happen is to repeat after me. Father, I admit that I am a sinner. I believe that, you're, that Jesus Christ was your son. I believe that he was crucified for my sins. I believe that he died and that he was res resurrected three days later. I believe that he now sits at your right hand making intercession for us. I accept him as my personal savior. And I declare today that I am saved. If you've said those few words and believe them, then your candle is now lit and you can go about the works that God has given you to accomplish. Now I encourage you to find a Bible teaching church so that you know what God, not man, but God expects of you. All right, that's my time. This is what we call a short stack. And I'll see you next time at The Ark.